The iPhone 6s and 6s Plus came out the September of 2015, running iOS 9. And were you to travel back in time and inform those purchasing the phone that it would still be fully supported six years later, I don't think anyone would believe you. You'd also probably get a lot of people wondering why, of all things you could do with the power of time travel, that's what you chose, but that's besides the point. The iPhone 6s going from iOS 9 to iOS 15 is absolutely unprecedented and way beyond anything any other smartphone manufacturer has ever done, beating even Apple's previous record of supporting the iPhone 5s from iOS 7 to iOS 12. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today I just wanted to take some time and talk about what is now officially the longest supported smartphone of all time, the iPhone 6s. Samsung relatively recently announced that their smartphones from 2019 onwards would be receiving a guaranteed three years of full software support, surpassing their former two years of full support. They also committed to giving four years of security updates. Google has supported three years of full updates for their own phones for a while now, so Samsung finally catching up was nice to see, as it's much too common with the Android industry for phone makers to put out a phone and then basically pretend it never existed after maybe a single year or maybe two of updates. Samsung was very guilty of this for a long time, but progress is progress, so I have to commend them for getting better. And yes, of course, custom ROMs can always extend life further on certain Androids, but I won't be mentioning that much as the vast, vast majority of users will never do that, much less know what custom ROMs are, so it's hard to consider it too relevant. So with some of the biggest manufacturers of Android phones in Google and Samsung, you've got three years of support. And then on the Apple side, the iPhone 6s has now been guaranteed seven years of full support. The math here might seem a little bit odd as the 6s came out in late 2015 and it's currently 2021, but iOS updates always come out around September, which means iOS 15 will drop in a few months and then get many more updates until the eventual iOS 16 update in late 2022. Late 2015 to late 2022 makes for a complete seven years, beating out the six year record that was soon to be met by the 6s and had already been achieved by the 2013 iPhone 5s. And there's actually no guarantee that the 6s's life will even end end in 2022, as it is very much possible it could somehow get even iOS 16. I highly doubt this would happen myself, but I also said the same thing about iOS 15, so at this point who even knows? If you had asked me even an hour leading up to WWDC if I thought the 6S and the old SC would get iOS 15, I would have given a very definitive no, and I wasn't alone in that thinking. Every rumor source talking about it said support for A8 and A9 devices would likely be ended completely, and yet, here we are. Apple doing this out of the blue is why I'm such a fan of the company in their current state. They've really developed a consumer-friendly mindset that's indicative of a couple things. First being that they're really pushing their services to make them money nowadays, pulling in revenue from many sources within iOS, not just the hardware, but also that they've learned from their mistakes of the past. The best way you can retain a customer on your side of the aisle is not to force them to upgrade to a new phone on the regular, even if that might make you more money in the short term, but instead to give them the best possible experience, making them want to go ahead and buy a new iPhone for themselves because their last iPhone did so well for them. This hasn't always been the case, with there being multiple examples from years ago of Apple slowing down phones with updates, so let's quickly go through the history when it comes to Apple and updates just to see where they went wrong and how they've recently gone right. The first iPhone is very slow on its final software version, but that's pretty easy to excuse given it was literally the first iPhone. The iPhone 3G, the second iPhone, is possibly even slower on iOS 4, and that's a bit harder to let Apple get away with, but still, mostly forgivable. It was the second iPhone, and it was also quite a bit cheaper than the first one. And then the next year's iPhone 3GS from 2009 not only got an extra year of support up to iOS 6, but it also ran really well, with iOS 6 providing a surprisingly smooth and optimized experience on the classic software. This positive precedent was short-lived, however, with the 4 getting to iOS 7, a much-anticipated version of software software that unfortunately slowed down things significantly. This was partly due to slow animations, and from what I remember, there was an update that sped things up, but the iPhone 4 on iOS 7 was rough, and just generally, it wasn't a great look for Apple. From here, you would expect the 4S to stop on iOS 8, and it likely should have, as it was already slow there. But no, for some inexplicable reason, Apple gave it iOS 9, and right here made the biggest mistake in software support they've ever done, or likely ever will do. iOS 9 on the 4S is practically 
basically unusable, absurdly slow, and when people talk about Apple and their supposed planned obsolescence, this is the phone they point to, and rightfully so. The 4S was a great piece of hardware, being the first dual-core iPhone in 2011. It brought Siri, but Apple pushed the tech way too far, and I think they realized this too late, as since then they've been much better. You had the iPhone 5 and 5C stopping on iOS 10, which was a good place to stop, as the experience was decent enough, not what I would call fast or even that smooth, but totally fine and definitely usable. And so here on iOS 11, Apple was presented with an interesting choice when it came to the iPhone 5S. The 5S was the world's first 64-bit smartphone and was a huge leap ahead of the iPhone 5 in power. And the next year's iPhone 6 kind of suffered because of that. It was definitely an upgrade with a bigger screen, but the tech inside really wasn't that well improved with the A8 chipset over the A7, and more importantly, the same amount of RAM. So if Apple was going to update the iPhone 6, the 5S would likely also be able to run that software. And so that's exactly what they did, giving both phones the iOS 12 update. A big reason I think for not ending the 5S's life on iOS 11 is how buggy and messy that software was. It was, uh, I don't know if you remember, but it was bad. But iOS 12 actually focused for perhaps the first time ever on performance and optimization, actually managing to genuinely speed up older iPhones by a noteworthy margin and giving them relevance beyond anything any Android phone had ever managed to do, at least without custom ROMs and unofficial means. I personally praised Apple to no end for this back in the day, but they weren't out of the woods when it came to planned obsolescence quite yet. The whole battery throttling controversy was still fairly fresh, as stupid as that whole situation was. And Apple is at fault here, don't get me wrong, I just think that people made it a lot bigger than it really was. Basically, when batteries degraded to a certain point, as all smartphone batteries do, eventually your phone would purposely throttle performance in order not to strain the battery to the point of shutting down randomly, as had been happening beforehand. So here and there slowing down your phone so it doesn't die on you. That might kind of seem reasonable, and it was, but the issue is that Apple didn't tell anyone when they implemented this. This resulted in people discovering their old iPhone wasn't performing as well as it did on older iOS versions, and coming to the premature conclusion that this was an intentional ploy by Apple to make you upgrade to a newer iPhone. Should Apple have told people and offered a choice in the first place? Absolutely. And they eventually would add the option as well as a whole page giving detailed battery health information, which is great. But they damaged their reputation regardless here. And you know what? Apple has more than made up for this since, with the 5S getting iOS 12 and performance getting better across the board on their old smartphones. And it left both the 5S and the iPhone 6 in a really good spot. One year later, approaching the launch of iOS 13, Apple would have to make a similar decision. The 5S and 6 were pretty close in performance, but the 6 was a year newer. And in the past, there had always been at least a year gap in tiers of iPhones. But then Apple did something that kind of surprised me, but was ultimately the best choice they could have made. They ended the life of the iPhone 6 on iOS 12 along with the 5S. This gave the iPhone 6 only five years of updates compared to the 6 of the 5S, but that was still plenty. And had it received the next update, I think there's a good chance it would have been quite slow, probably not to the same extent as the 4S on iOS 9, but still unpleasant. The iPhone 6S and 2016 SE were now the oldest iPhones still supported, and because the 6 lost support somewhat prematurely, it was no surprise when they both would receive iOS 14 in 2020. So things are looking good, it seems like Apple finally has a good grasp on what they're doing. Ending support seemingly early for the iPhone 6, so it would stay pretty decently fast forever on iOS 12, that was a good move, and one that they knew could backfire if people were angry enough about it, but I think people realized why they did it. And so finally, this brings us to now, where we have learned that the 2016 iPhone iPhone SE and 2015 6S are getting iOS 15. This is shocking, but in hindsight, maybe shouldn't be. Apple's recent history has again shown they know what they're doing, and I have great confidence iOS 15 will be a smooth experience. Heck, I've got the developer beta on both the 6S and the SE, and not that it matters, but the iPhone 11 as well, and they're all seemingly running fine, despite this being such an early beta. And while it's definitely not bug-free, and it's definitely a little slower on the older phones, I've been impressed thus far. It doesn't really feel any different from iOS 14, and the phones remain totally usable, at least bugs aside because again, early developer beta. But I was happy with the iPhone 6 getting stuck on iOS 12, so why is another version of iOS a good thing here? Well, for one thing, as long as performance is okay, then there's really no detriment to the users. And besides getting new features, it means that these phones will still be able to run all the newest apps from the App Store, except for maybe a select few that require features from newer iPhones, or maybe a few games that require beefier tech specs. It also keeps the headphone jack alive for another year in the iPhone line for whatever that's worth, but more than anything else, it means that for yet another 
year, users still on these old iPhones, and there's a lot of them, will be able to do basically anything that someone who buys the latest and greatest iPhone can do. Think about it. You go out and you buy an iPhone 12 Pro Max. What can you really do that an iPhone 6S user can't do? Yeah, you've got some more cameras on the back, and it's gonna be faster, but I bet you'll both be using Instagram and Twitter and all the same apps, a lot of the same games. At the end of the day, the experience is gonna be very similar. Apple ensuring that these older phones still remain so relevant is like the definition of consumer friendly. And in my opinion, Apple has more than proven that they are the absolute best when it comes to any smartphone maker. Now that might ruffle some feathers, so let me clarify. I'm not saying iPhone is the best. It's totally fair if you're not a fan of iPhones and their software, but I do think they've long been the best when it comes to how they treat their users. Prioritizing consistent updates as well as security like no other on the Android side. And I think it's about the best aspect you can get right because it leaves these people on these older phones in a place where they can still use them and do pretty much anything. I think of my grandpa using his iPhone 5S still and it works for him. The battery sucks but he can still use it for like everything he does which isn't a lot but it still works. There are so many reasons to prefer Android over iOS such as the customizability and vice versa too but this isn't about that. I just want to give Apple credit where credit is due. I feel like they tend to get the short end of the stick when it comes to the general tech community. There's definitely a loud portion of techies who love to hate on Apple and their customers. And while again, so many places where that criticism is justified, hopefully the whole idea of planned obsolescence is finally gonna die. Apple's not forcing you to buy a new iPhone by slowing down your phone. They're actually extending your phone's life, and that's something that needs to be commended. The iPhone 6S and 6S Plus ironically were considered pretty minor upgrades when they launched, fixing Bendgate by having a thicker aluminum and just some minor upgrades that we see in every S phone. And yet, here we are today. That A9 chipset and extra gig of RAM made for a big jump over that iPhone 6, especially the extra gigabyte of RAM, given that the iPad Air 2 and iPad Mini 4 both actually have the same chipset as the iPhone 6 with the A8, but are still getting iOS 15 thanks to the two gigs of RAM. Seven years of updates for the 6S. It's so hard to believe, and who knows? Maybe Apple will end up pushing that number to eight. I really doubt it, and I'd be pretty skeptical if they tried to, but clearly, I've been wrong before. And with that, I think I'm about done here. Just wanted to talk a bit about the whole situation, as it's left me really impressed. Any of you out there still using the 2016 iPhone SE or the 6S? How's it running for you? And are you surprised to see it get iOS 15? Make sure you let me know in the comments down below. Curious to hear your thoughts. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button, and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason. Thanks for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.